what is TWS podcast uh, episode or whatever? Who cares at this point? Like, <laughs> the rants with the vindicated. It's my podcast. And I do what I want to. People, listen. Word, is it still alive? It's not worth it for me, Rich. Right, we're going to keep going. I know I changed my voice at work. Bars on the radio. Oh, what is TWS podcast? Yes. ready. I feel like the end is staring at my watch and I'm feeling so new school. Suicide attempts. How many tries to take? They ain't ready. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. Hmm? <laughs> Are you recording? I am recording, yes. This <laughs> is <laughs> the What Is TWS podcast. Uh, episode, I want to say 36. 36, I think, yeah. yeah. I'm going to let it all occur. Yeah, I was just starting out with a little uh, little bit from uh, Rain Dance of Odyssey's new album, The Iceberg. I'm really, uh, really digging that album. Big Odyssey fan. Uh, he's coming to Austin on the... April, April April 28th. Yeah. We We're got, going. Yeah, we got our tickets. Got our babysitter. Got our babysitter. We are going. We're going to see all the Odyssey when he comes to town. Uh, again, what is TWS Podcast episode 36? If you haven't already noticed, uh, tonight is going to be uh, me, J. Dow Flan, and uh, I, what did we Did we give you a name? I don't think time? we gave us a name. Gave me a name. People call me Tan Flan. I don't Please know if that's. Don't, nah, that, I don't know if that's. Nah. Cool. No, is that not cool? Not, uh, you, no. No? Just, if you don't come up with something, then Hamps is what it's going to be. That's, so. well, <laughs> all right. All right, Flan and Hamps is in the building. Jeez, it's this a, name is never going to go away. No, nah, I'm not going to let it. It's uh, Evening with the Flans, part two. Part two? Part two. My, I, I'm feeling like making this a regular thing, if I could, if I can get you to commit to it. I'll I think, think about uh, it. I think it'd be cool, but... um. Let's see what everybody thinks. Hey, let's see what people think. Y'all, y'all let us know if, if you enjoy these uh, evenings with the flans. Mm. This evening, I am sipping another uh, sip. I don't know if this is the same one I was doing last time. I don't think it is. But this is the, uh, the blackberry mo- mint lime. Mojo berry. A mojo berry, yeah. Mojo berry, which is blackberry mint and lime. It's uh, quite delicious. I have a sparkling cherry Ozarka. Hey, <laughs> it's delicious. It really isn't, but um, man, I like my sparkling right. waters. Yeah, this so it's this Oscar night. I think the Oscars are actually going on outside of this room right now. Right now on the TV, uh, we watched a couple of awards. Well, we saw La La Land win a couple of things, and uh, it I was just the original score, I original think, score, and, and then original song, original song. Yeah. We didn't tune in immediately. No, we missed a lot in the beginning. Because it came on at 7. I heard that the, the Hidden Figures lady were brought out. Not, not the actresses, not the actresses, but the... Oh, the actual... The actual women. Okay, I think... I I, I was following stuff on Facebook, so don't quote me. I, uh, I'm not an Oscar. I don't like uh, award shows in general. Like, I don't watch the Grammys. I don't watch the... Emmy or whatever. That used to be big when we were younger. Yeah, I don't watch the BT Awards. We watched the, the Grammys and everything. The and MVAs. We used to watch all that when we were younger, and now it just seems like it's not that important. Like, I have a group of girlfriends, they're a bit older, that we made it a point every year to see the movies that were nominated for, Oscar. for an Oscar yeah. before the, the Oscars happened and that just kind of fell to the wayside too i mean it's just not as important as it used to be but i still want to (laughs) know for whatever reason i don't know i just i have like little to no interest whatsoever like i I really i gotta stop i I hate i feel like i say that about everything i really don't care but i i honestly don't care you all oiling your scalp in the microphone Uh stuff now go i mean it's part of the track now might as well continue I got to multitask. I got things to do. That's, that's a mom thing. Uh, it is. So, yeah, what, what things did happen that uh, affected me? Uh, Bill Bill Paxton passed away Bill today. Bill Paxton today. Today. 61. Today. I didn't realize he was that old. I didn't realize he was 61 years old. 61 is older than I thought he would have been, but 61 is still very young to be young passing to away. Die, yeah. Yes. But he never looked like a 60-year-old man. I no. never saw him in anything and thought he was... 60 years old. No, never. But Bill Paxton is important to us because uh, early in our relationship, one of the things we did together was uh, 
watch Big Love. You we watch Big Love. You suckered me into it, and then uh, I eventually did begin to enjoy. That the show. was my favorite Bill Paxton anything. Well, I'm a, I was a Twister fan too. In the movie, not nah, Twister so. Twister was a good movie. Nah, I liked really. him and um, Helen Hunt in nah, that movie. I remember him like uh, like David said. I remember him from uh, Weird Science. Chet. Weird Science. He was the brother. It got turned Weird into Science. a pile of shit. But. Big Love, that was about four or five seasons, and that show was amazing. Big Love was a that was that was one of our first like we got to watch it every every Sunday Sunday when it comes mm-hmm. on type shows. I mean, I think I went from Big Love to like to True Blood and uh, then Walking Dead, then Walking Dead, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, I think yeah, Big Love was the first one. I was. Do you remember of, how Big Love ended? Uh, I don't know if you even watched it towards the end. Was it one of those, like, somebody got shot, but we don't know who got shot type thing? No, we know who got shot. Bill died. Bill died. Oh, my. Bill died and ended up. I knew somebody got shot. In the the big love. And he got shot by just some random person. They shoot. It was some random neighbor that was jealous of him or something and just shot him in the street in front of the house. And he, he died at the end of the... It was sad. I remember crying. I think I cried. You, it's not. A, I mean, you crying about something is not like a huge, like oh, Tammy cry. You cried at the end of Django, <laughs> like well, you, <laughs> you cry. I did uh, about a lot of it, things. That movie was too much. It was too much to handle. I couldn't take it. It was, it was just too much. It was too much. Just too much blackness too, and too much too much too blackness. many chains. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just too many chains and too many too fights much and blackness. It was just too much. I just couldn't handle it. Yes, sir, could you please just just tone stop, down the stop blackness? Stop being black. Oh. Stop being black. It was too much racism Not and so it was just blackness. that's what I meant to say. It was too much racism and I was too many n words being slung around and. Yeah. I mean, I heard that even even DiCaprio had issue with like even DiCaprio had. To be like, talk to to help him get through some of the scenes where he had to say the n word, like. And even he repeatedly. went and talked to Jamie Fox and was like, "Hey, hey, man, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I know I sound real convincing saying this, but I'm not comfortable. Though. I'm not having I'm fun. I'm not comfortable with this. Are you okay with this? I know it looks like it's rolling off the tongue real easy, <laughs> though. But I'm trying to tell you, I'm. Not, I talked to. The, I went to Quentin. I so I tried to figure a way out of this. Ain't no way to get around it. Ain't no way to get around it. Ain't no way to get around it. It was was a dope movie. We did make the mistake of taking your grandmother to see it on Christmas. What was it? Christmas Day? It was Christmas Day. Day. Christmas Day. Whose bright (laughs) idea was it to take my 75-year-old grandmother to go see see Django Django on Christmas Christmas Day? Day. I think that might have been Uncle Darren's idea. I think she was all right until uh, that... uh, that Jeezy song came on like <laughs> middle of the <laughs> devil is alive. I think I think at that point when Young Jeezy came on, I think I think she would die. At one point, me and Grandma were just like just hugging each other, just trying to get through the rest of the movie because it was just. Yeah. She said she will never again see another Quentin Tarantino movie in her life. And yeah, Grandma left the theater like like forget this. I didn't enjoy this. I wasn't happy about it. Mm-hmm. I ain't coming back here no more. You cried like you know. It, I don't know. We won't dwell on that, though. We won't dwell on that. I'm an emotional person. Obviously. 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 That About to get in your feelings right now. You probably, there, yeah. There you go. Whatever, whatever. 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 Anyway. What else is going on? Uh, the juice cleanse is over. Yes. The juice cleanse is over. Three days. I was I was being a punk about it. I'm a, I ain't going to lie. It wasn't that bad. Like it three was days. Not that bad. I've done a five day cleanse. You know, three days wasn't that big of a deal. I just uh I had gotten into a good groove with my foods, man. I got you know, I go to work, I have my Uber Eats, I'm trying something different every day. Mm-hmm. I got stuff to look forward to. You know, we, we you know, we we so busy with the baby, we're not cooking at home either. So I'm coming home, still ordering from Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. I had like a crazy list. I go to restaurants, you know, I do, if I want a seafood, pal, I got my seafood. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think I was a little hurt by that. Like all of a sudden, I couldn't eat nothing. I couldn't vape. I couldn't. It was just a lot of, you know, I'm starting to realize I'm an emotional eater. And, you know, 
I do it when I'm bored. I do it when I'm upset. And that's a bad thing. You shouldn't be an emotional eater. That's when you just put on 10 pounds without even thinking about it. I mean, who who am I staying skinny for? I got you. Really? Yeah. No, I don't care about you, you staying. You going nowhere? I'll go somewhere if I want to go somewhere. You ain't going nowhere? Mm -hmm. All right, keep uh, on, keep on. Keep on. You keep on. Uh, pretend like you're going somewhere. See what <laughs> Make a move. Bust a move. <laughs> I just want you to be healthy. And that was the whole reason why I insisted that you do the juice cleanse. Because sometimes you just have to reset your body. The reset your body. And then you're going to go from... The juice cleanse to eating tacos mm -hmm. and rolling rooster Roll, well, you the very bought, next day. You bought me the taco. That's because you said, don't come back here with no tacos and see what happened. I don't remember saying that. You did say something to the effect of, come back here with some tacos. I don't remember saying that. I remember you, I remember you offering tacos I offered as you were leaving. Breakfast, yes. And I was like, well, yeah, if you're, going, if you're offering tacos, I have not turned down a taco yet. My, you know, my, my streak of taco acceptance. Is 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 a long one. So like, if you gonna get the tacos, hell yeah, I want the tacos. Then you gonna say, well, is tacos the right thing for you to get, get the damn tacos? <laughs> <laughs> don't come back here, don't talk about it. Don't offer me the tacos, and then once I accept them, then try to pull back the offer. Nah, you didn't put it in in my mind that we getting tacos. I waited to that. I didn't try to pull uh, at midnight. I'm gonna eat, or even uh, I was up at like three a.m. I didn't pull up at three a.m. I'm gonna eat. I think I did have a, uh, I had a cheddar bunny. At uh, at three a.m. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, did at least make you eat it? I might have like, force food in your mouth. It might have had like one goldfish or something at three a.m. But I waited until the morning. So it was about what a good ten ten thirty that morning. That's well, I, I and the reason I did the juice cleanse was just for that, just uh, an exercise and discipline. I wanted to, you know, and that's why I was so adamant about, you know, even though I, I didn't feel well, my head was hurting. And I was hungry, and sometimes I felt weak. I was real adamant with you about I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat, even though they say you can have some raw some veggies, raw veggies or egg whites. I'm like, I'm not gonna until I get to the point where I just can't make it without it. I'm not gonna do it because this is this was more like an exercise and and being disciplined. Can I stick with this? And no matter how much it sucks, you know. So not it wasn't cheap. about just trying to actually clean your body out. It was. It was more. It was like a mental cleanse like just just being disciplined and sticking to something you know the the sobriety has been the same thing so sometimes i need these exercises just to prove to myself that you know you can do it i can do it so that, that's what it was more for me but speaking of our daughter and force feeding people uh your daughter i thought we had a little girl mm -hmm. all of a sudden we got like a uh, a chimpanzee or something in the house. She's a chimpanzee now. Flinging poop. I don't mean to call my black daughter a monkey, but she ain't here flinging poop. And I don't know what other uh, metaphors make. I was just make. so disgusted. I have never in my life been around a baby. I'm trying to get her changed so I can put her in the tub. And she grabs the diaper full of poop and tosses it. Now, one I want to say. Oh, my gosh. You realize that happened on your watch. She had never flung, flung poop when she was under my kid. I just want to put that on the board. I want really? to put that one up on the scoreboard, one for dad. Really? Dad has not been involved in any poop flinging incidents. You can't say the same thing. Mama can't say the same thing. It's because she gives me a harder time than she does you. So a that's way harder time. Your fault. How was that my fault? Because you are soft. You have a problem. Wait a minute. How'd you say that? Soft. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how you say soft. Yes. No, because you're not soft. You soft. You like extra soft. Like you don't. You just let her do whatever. She playing with trash. You're like, well, she's quiet. It's trash. Don't, don't let the girl let play, play with, with trash. trash. Look, I did let her know. I said, "Mommy is mad that you threw poop." Oh, I had to pick up yes, your poop yes. like a daggone puppy. You let her know, so she's aware. <laughs> <laughs> She is aware did that you, mommy was mad at did her. Did you send her a strongly worded letter or something? Like what? No, I no. gave her the finger. The finger. The the mom finger. I am mad at you. And get your butt in this tub and don't say a word. And she was quiet. That's the advantage I think the dads have. Dads don't have to give a finger. We don't even necessarily have to raise our voice sometimes. She know that like the happy dad voices. Oh, hey, you know what's that? Da, da, da. Hey. It's a bitsy spider. <laughs> she know that's the happy and the and the 
and the what the hell is wrong with you voices, Elise, Elise, go to your mother. <laughs> That's my go-to. You said to me. Go to your mother. That's not even right. Go to Tammy, get your child. That's not even right. Go to your mother. So when she being bad, you just send her to me. No, nah, I handle it. She's not bad around me. She goes to sleep when I try to put her to sleep. Which is not fair. It doesn't make any sense at all. But it's because she knows. She knows that there is, there's no point in crying. There's no, <laughs> all of that, all of those, you know, uh, theatrics and stuff that she puts on, she knows there's no point in it. That if dad comes in the room, I might, I'm going to stay in the room until you go to sleep. I'm not going to leave you in there by yourself. I'm, I'm going to let you feel like somebody's dead. But I, I might not even look at you. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely ain't going to talk to you. If I was smart enough to bring my phone with me, I, I'm not even going to look at you. I ain't going to look at you. I'm in here. And that's the only thing I'm doing in here. I ain't going to look at you. I ain't going to talk to you. And you damn sure ain't coming up out that crib. So you ain't by yourself, little girl. You ain't but... by yourself. But uh, your options are slim. You can either accept it and take your ass to sleep. Or you can, or you can talk to the wall. The daddy ain't listening. That's why I send you downstairs in the middle of the night now. If she wakes up, she's pretty good about not waking up. But if she does, that's why I send you. Because you back upstairs in five minutes. It takes me 30 minutes to get her back to sleep. So, no. You know, she see me coming to the room, like, oh, you going to get my pacifier? Okay, I got my pacifier back. All right, all right. I'm all going right. to sleep. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. But she slung poop. On your watch, though. She slung poop. On your watch. Didn't have any day. <sighs> I don't understand. All right. So you took notes before we started this. Because uh, everybody knows that I do not, I'm not the organized one. It's, Rich is normally the person who has the topics and it sends me the, you know, gives me the signal on what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. And I take it from there. Uh, you're going to have to fill that role. I don't, I don't know what we're talking about. Just real quick. Uh-huh. Why is the Google Home responding to questions that nobody's asking? I don't know. That's that real quick. I don't know. It's creepy. That may be true. Is someone in the house asking Google Home questions yes. that we can't hear? While we were while we were sitting on the couch, somebody leaned over, whispered into the Google Home, and asked the question, and it just started answering it. Did, has someone passed away in this house, and maybe is still here and asking Google Home questions? Just to mess with us to see what see, happens. See, Tammy, now you're taking it to places they don't need to go. Because if some, we can leave tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play them games. This, this is not going to, I'm not. Uh, it's know, creepy. It I'm not creepy. in the poltergeist. That movie Just is not happening sudden. on my watch. We can leave tonight. Ain't nothing in here but the baby I love enough. She grab right now. We grab her, we can go. We can get in the car now. This podcast will stop. I will cut everything off. <laughs> Right now. Right now. We can go. It's just creepy. You don't think it's creepy? I mean, I, it's happened more than once. It's happened more than three times. It's a glitch. It's a glitch. Ghost right. in the shell. All right. Fine. Yeah. Fine. But don't don't make no more jokes about people who died in here. All right. But we can leave tonight. <laughs> Where are we going to go? I don't know. It don't matter. <laughs> we ain't going to be here. I know that much. <laughs> we call somebody. Call, you know. Call some friends. I call Rich. All right, dog. I need to, I need you to house all of us for the foreseeable future till we, <laughs> till we get this ghost situation worked out. I ain't going back. Y'all can go in there. I'll pay somebody to come get our stuff. Rich is going to be like, look, y'all can stay for the night. Like, we, Maybe tomorrow. Like, we black folks. Once we get in here, you're going to have a hard time getting this <laughs> You're going to have a hard time getting rid of us. We don't go nowhere. Don't My go brother nowhere. pulled that on me one time. The oldest one. He was like, yeah, sis, I'm going to come visit for the weekend. Stay for a year. A year? A year. A year. I don't let people in. Yeah. yeah if you, if you want to come visit, you want to show me a round trip ticket. That's what I'm saying. That's why I, I enjoy this distance. Because when before you... Before you get on the plane, you need to go ahead and send me the itinerary to show me <laughs> where your return trip... <laughs> You already got that taken care of. Yes. My, gonna, my brother will ain't pull. Ain't going to be no stranded bays out here. <laughs> he will pull that. Uh, oh, yeah. I only pulled the one way just so I can get, get down here. Now I can't get back. I need some money to get back. I know what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to, because uh, you made me watch. Well, you didn't make me, but 
I ended up doing it. That what what's the name of the show? Big Big, Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies. New so. show on HBO. Big Little Lies. So I don't know what happened. I came in where uh, the, it was two. It was a bunch of parents. It was a little girl and her mother, and the mm-hmm. little girl I guess had been choked. Like I guess there were like visible bruises on there her were neck. Visible bruises on her neck, and the teacher was trying to figure out who did it. Who did it? And pretty much told the little girl, point them out. Mm-hmm. So the little girl points out some little boy. That's new to the neighborhood, new to the school. That was his first day. Mm-hmm. And, and says he did it. And so he's there with his mother. The girl's mother is demanding an apology. Uh, right. The little the, boy is saying. The little boy is saying he didn't do it. Right. And the mother even went to him and was like, look, you can, you can just admit it. You know, you won't, you're not in any trouble. Just, you know, and he's like, no, I didn't do it. Like, I'm serious. I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And so now it's like a beef between the two parents, you know, you should just make your child apologize. And the other one's like, well, my child isn't lying. Well, you you calling my child a lie. So that immediately made me wonder, like, how I would do in a situation like that. Because I think my, my, I think my immediate, uh, like, reflex would be to get my child, like, just, just say you're sorry. Like, right. I, you know, I normally go the path of least resistance. Just say you sorry. But watching that scene, the way that I played out, I was with her. Like, nah, my like my son. My son doesn't lie to me. Doesn't lie to me, and he legitimately didn't do this. I'm not gonna force him to take you know to publicly apologize. Right, he's just six year old. Right. To publicly apologize for something he says he didn't he do. He didn't do it. Now y'all all think my kid is the one here strangling people. I'm not gonna take right. that. You know. <laughs> but then the kicker was the mother of the little girl. Went up to the little boy and said, yeah. you know, put your hands on my son again and on my daughter again and you will be in big trouble. And the mother just stood there. Yeah. The, the other mother being. seemed to like jump up at that. Like, yo, ho, what are you trying to say? Like, you know. Leave the little boy alone. You know. need to apologize to the little boy now. I mean, it was just too much drama. This is all confusing to whoever's listening. But I'm not going to let... Some other mother talk to my child like that. What are you going to do? I'm not going to just stand there. What are you going to I'm do? I'm not going to just stand there. So what? If some not standing there means you're going to do what? I'm going to say something you're to the say mother. Something. Mm-hmm. Don't talk to my child that way. Get your ass up and get up out of here before something bad happens. I say, I, I, it, you kill me with that because I, 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 I want to see what the bad thing going to happen. I'll be the one like, gonna keep messing with it. I want to see what's going to happen. Gonna be something I'll bad. be the one instigating, like, cause I want to see what what bad gonna happen. I don't think you ever been in a fight in your life. I really don't. I really don't. I'm trying. No, I don't think I have. Yeah, but you talk. I have all... had to. Cause you just people scared of you because you get to talk. I have not had. And once to. you get the clapping. Book... <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I think that there's something about me that people just don't seem to really challenge or something. I mean, I don't know. I don't. That's... Yeah, I, I really don't get it. Because people really seem scared of you. I'm not my foot, you know. I've had bosses that... I live with her every day. I've had bosses that will harass and be mean to my coworkers. But when it comes to me, they don't act that way towards me at all. And like, I've had coworkers come to me and say, Oh, haven't you had a bad experience with so-and-so? And like, no, not, not at all. They don't talk to me uh, that way. I just remember when we had that friend who like, was in the parking lot for like 30 minutes because he didn't want to come in the house until you left. And I was like, how how does my wife have a grown man afraid to come to the door? I, and I, I don't get offended, but I told one, like, she she's a chihuahua. She going to bark. <laughs> <laughs> she going to make a lot of noise. But she ain't gonna do nothing. Right? I just you just I gotta mean, I'm not gonna... you gotta listen to what you gotta listen to her mouth because she gonna say something. She gonna get her. She gonna get her feelings across. You gonna know how she feel before it's over. But that's about it. I don't know why he had to sell the parking lot. I'm not gonna hit him. I'm not gonna get the cast iron skillet out. That's how I'm trying to figure out what what is it that people are afraid you're gonna do. I ain't getting the cast iron skillet out. Hit him because that thing is heavy anyway. I might have some words. Folks probably don't want to hear what I have to say. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe. they just don't have years in. Well, a couple years in, you learn to tune it out. You don't hear it no more. What? You don't hear it no more. What else we gonna talk about, baby? So we was gonna talk about more parenting stuff. What's some other parenting topics? 
another big thing in that in that show is the whole issue of or the competition of the stay at home moms versus the working moms and the judgment that working moms get or the judgment that stay at home moms get. I just don't I don't know if there should be any competition at all. Everybody's a mom, everybody does what they can do and everybody's doing the best they can. So why does why does there have to be any kind of competition at all? If you're a stay at home mom, then great, stay at home mom. If you're a working mom, then that you know, that means you work. You, you're still a mom and you're still working hard regardless. Why does there have to be judgment either way? I mean, definitely there shouldn't be judgment, but, you know, there's always going to be, uh, anytime you have people in different situations, you know, people tend to find a way to use that to separate themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, but you, since you've had the opportunity to sort of live a little bit of both sides mm -hmm. so far, Mm -hmm. Like you did the six months with her mm -hmm. uh, when she was first born. And then now you've had what another nine months back to work, back to work. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how do you feel about the differences between the two, you know, being stay at home and having to juggle work? It's all hard. It's all hard. I'm not going to say that one is harder than the other. I, I, I really can't say that at all. Staying at home with Elise for six months was extremely hard. I mean, I I hadn't gotten maybe because it was in the beginning of new new parenthood. I hadn't figured everything out yet, so I still hadn't figured out how to have the baby taken care of, the house clean, and dinner ready by the time he got home. I, I didn't know how to do all that. Maybe if I was staying at home now, that we're kind of into a groove and she's more on a schedule. Maybe I would have a better, better grasp on it. right grasp on how to get everything done. But um, but back when when she was first born, I was just it was it was a good day if I took a shower. Yeah, yeah. I remember those days. Whatever. I remember those days. It was a good. day. I remember coming home and you just being excited to have somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> just, is a, a person that can respond. I can say something, and they can say something okay. back. Hey, let's talk. Like, oh Jesus! <laughs> oh, it Jesus. was a good day. You know what your daughter did today? What she did? It was a good day, but you know, now that I'm back to work, you know, it took. I want to say it took a good six to eight months. I, I think now. I probably have a better grasp on how to be this whole stay at home mom. I mean, the the working mom. It's it's all hard, and the, it feels like the second you get a handle on it, it changes. It changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. You know, I had a good handle on because I was a stay at home mom that was still breastfeeding, and I had to do it all. You know, bring all the pump and equipment with me to work. And I got to a point where I wasn't forgetting things anymore. I didn't have to keep coming back home to get the pumping equipment. And then something happened and it just changed. I mean, things change. Elisa's sleeping schedule changed. So sometimes I would get enough sleep. Sometimes I wouldn't. It, it's just. Yeah, I think from my point of view, like the goal for me, you know, when I was a kid, imagining a family. Yeah, you know, or I guess you know when I got old enough to really understand the realities of of maybe what a family would mean. Mm -hmm. That you know, my thought was I want my wife. I, I want my wife to not have to work. Mm -hmm. You know that I I would like the situation to be that she can work if she wants. I'm not I'm not saying I have to have a stay at home. You know she has to be a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. I want it to be that she doesn't have to be a working mom. Like if she wants to be a working mom, then so be. That's it. her that's that's, choice. That's her choice. But I didn't want uh, I didn't want a situation where you had to do it. And I think we 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 were almost there. It wouldn't have been it would have been tight, you know, trying to uh, balance everything on one income. We we made it for a certain amount of time, and then you know of course like the whole D D W I and the legal fees and all that stuff, you know, kind of forced our hand at that point. Right. But I think so you were, I, I mean, you were, yeah, you were looking before it happened. But I think yeah, I was, I was, cause I was getting, getting bored. 
I was getting a little bored and I was actually getting offers. People were coming to me that I knew yeah, saying, hey, you know, are you going back to work anytime soon? You know, so that was probably the only reason why I started as soon as I did. Yeah. Because I had some connections. But um, but now I'm a I'm a cushy state employee. <laughs> it must be nice. It's it's nice to have the 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 stable hours. Yeah. I know when I'm going to work and when I'm going to come home. I feel a sneeze coming on. Go on, get get it out. You gotta get it out. Uh, God damn. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Your life must be hell. I can't imagine. <laughs> you was in it's full gone. on, like you was all prepared for I was the sneeze. Like, your hand, your hand was right there. You're like, I'm ready to catch it. Where is it? Can wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, no, nah, not come. It's gone. It's gone. Now it's going to just bother me until it comes. It's, it takes me almost 20 minutes to get a sneeze out. Sometimes that, that doesn't make sense. To it's me. really Sneez- weird. Sneezing is an involuntary action to me. I don't know that it's happening. It just happens. That's just, I was sitting here and ah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't feel a tickle in the nose yeah. first? That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, you know, my sneezes come in bunches, so it's like, you know, three or four. At a time. At a time, then I get to recover. It's like, what, what just happened? Who, <laughs> who hit me? What? No, I know they ain't I, jumping me. My sneezes come in 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 stages. No, it's not. It's not cool. This sneeze is going to come out eventually. The sneeze game came out eventually. All right, let me see what else is on your phone. Cuz I didn't write none of these down. I don't know why you don't write things down. I don't like to. Okay, How okay. I do not like being prepared. I my preparation is is me being me. <laughs> nah. I feel I I I guess I prefer confidence. Over preparation. I, to me, you can't prepare for everything. Like you, I'll never be prepared enough to feel like something couldn't happen where I'm gonna be or I'm gonna have to ad lib. So if I feel confident enough that no matter what happens, I can ad lib, then that's just how I. So what do you ad lib about? Just bull, just when, BS, just random BS. You talking about on this show or in general? In general. I mean, when things happen, you you know. You know my motto, like, I do what has to be done. So, I may not be prepared for it, but when the situation comes and the situation demands a certain action, whether I'm prepared for it or not, it has to be done, so I'm going to do it. And that's and that's it. Yeah. That's how I do. Yeah. It all doesn't make sense to you. You're it doesn't all, make sense to me. You're all an accountant and organized and stuff like that. I just... I've got to prepare. No. No. I've got to prepare because I hate bit. preparing, and then like your preparation gets you know blown out the water because one thing changes, like something happens, and then all of a sudden you know everything, all your plans are gone, and now now you have to ad lib. So I just that's how I live in the in the world of ad libs. All right, all right. I feel confident enough that no matter what happens, I can make a move, I can do something. I mean, that's when you have your plan A's and your plan B's. It's too much. It's too much. Too much. It's too much. Just do it. Um, I'm Nike, man. Just do it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. I've got to be a little bit more organized than that. To do it. Ain't nothing just a little to bit. It, to do it. Ain't nothing to do it. Don't you just want to, you should just want to one day just be like free like me and just. I'm free. No, nah, you're not. You're really not. You really? I'm loosey goosey. No, I'm, no, I'm, not even close. I'm fly by the. If seat I didn't of my bring pants. some like anarchy and chaos to your life, you would. Mm-mm. No, I think you you need me. You need me around just to mix things up every once in a while because it will be it will be a little bit boring around here. I have learned how to be a little bit looser because I have no choice because of you. Because you never know what I'm gonna do. Never know. You never know. You never know what song I'm gonna sing in the morning. It's ridiculous. You never know. You never know what legal trouble I'm gonna get into. <laughs> you just never know. It's ridiculous. That's what it is. It's life. It's no. the moment we gonna live in it, baby. We gonna live in it. All right. So then I have to ask you this question because this was asked of me 
mm-hmm. in a uh, in a podcast episode yet to be aired. One, uh, thank you for being as uh, as supportive and willing to roll with the punches as you are. We we did a recording here on a uh, mm. Friday night that mm-hmm. was you know interesting to say the least. And uh, at what point? And some people might, some women might have uh, frowned on or uh, not been so willing to accept. Uh, the shenanigans, shenanigans that were yeah, going on in, yeah. in the house, but you uh, you took it all in stride, and I have to uh, I have to take my hat off to you for that. Um, yeah, you are uh, appreciate. I try. You are appreciate. I try my best. I just want to know at what age are the shenanigans supposed to slow down? Like we're thirty five years old, and we have had our share of shenanigans. We have done some things. We've had some crazy nights. Pre child, pre marriage, even being together, we we've, we've done some some crazy things. Oh yeah, those those big love marathon nights. Really, I'm, just, I'm kidding. Okay. Go ahead for, where are you going with this? I just want to know at what age are you supposed to just? I'm not saying that you're not supposed to live life and have fun, but the shenanigans and people know what I mean by shenanigans. I, just, I don't know if they do. I'm just okay. So here's what I think. I think, you know, I, I had my shenanigan years and uh, and probably even held back in those shenanigan years because you know that there's still things you want to be able to do. And if you go but so far, you're going to prevent yourself from having those opportunities. Mm-hmm. So, you you know, you let yourself go, but you don't let yourself go. I think you had your shenanigan years. Then, then life hits you. Responsibility hits you. Mm-hmm. And you... You buckle down and you become an adult for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say right now, I envision that to be like when Elise, you know, is finally like able to be on her. I'm going to even say like leaves the house or goes to college. But when she's like, when she's like good, when she's, you know, grown up, she's a woman and, and she's capable of handling her life. Like mid twenties. On her own. I ain't, I ain't gonna put a time frame on it. See mm-hmm. how see how nice I'm being. Okay. You know, if it was my mother talking, it'd be that's eighteen. Eighteen. I need to know where you're going to school or where you're moving because you don't live here no that's more. That's because you're a boy. For women, for girls, it's different. Oh, see that that's sexist. But anyway. No, I mean because <laughs> the dads want to still take care of you know the little girls until. But I take care. I think the only thing I want to do is make sure ain't no bullshit ass dude getting close to you. You mm-hmm. know. But other than that, yeah, enjoy your life. You know, just don't don't be don't be fucking losers out here. Pretty much <laughs> what I'm trying to say, be you know, I raised you better than that. And that's kind of tradition too, isn't it? That the woman's supposed to stay at home with their parents until she gets married and what? she leaves the parents' house to the, go to her husband's house. That's, I mean, that's old school right there. That's old school. I'm that's not that old school. That's very old school. I'm not that old. Cause I, that's what, cause, so that's what I'm trying to say. I think that like once, once your children leave the house and that level of responsibility is gone, but now you probably are making more money than you've ever made before mm-hmm. and you you don't have that fear of losing out on opportunities because you've, You've done like the stuff with your life that you were supposed to. I don't want to say like you, you know, it's over for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, like you had you, you raised your family, you raised your children. You know they're good. You know maybe you're looking toward retirement, and now you can you can play around and you can go back to the shenanigans a little bit and and kind of go even harder than you did before. You may not have the energy to do it like you used to, but uh, hey, what's holding you back? But shenanigans, like what happened here, uh, those kind of shenanigans. Hey, yo, Tammy, like like you said, you know, you never know what's gonna happen living with me. I'm just saying, if you if you think it's crazy now, wait till wait till uh, Elise and me are out the house. We gonna need more than one house. Wait till you gonna wanna have some. You gonna wanna have some fun again at one point. I'm gonna wanna have fun again, but I don't know if I'm gonna go back to. The twenties type shenanigans, kind of fun. Imagine the twenties type shenanigans with the knowledge and the money that we have now. It'd be way, but like you know, like the parties we used to have at your apartment. 
if we were having them here at this house, mm-hmm. you know, like there's it's just a bigger venue. There's more than how we can be outside, inside, grilling. You understand how much grander of a, of this of a shenanigan it could be, and you owe it all. You know, more responsible people. You know, nobody's like you don't really have to worry about nobody fucking up your walls or. Uh, uh, real? Do we really not have to worry about that? I, depending on who you invite, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, I, you know, our core group of of uh, of friends. Yeah. Our shenanigans usually wound up. We were at Reggie's house in the morning. Like I've gotten to a point now where I want to go home and I want to be in my own. That's bed why you throw the party, and I, right? And when I wake up. I don't want to see people sprinkled about in the living room either. That's where our shenanigans wound up because people were too drunk or high to go home and they stayed here to at your house and then we all go out for breakfast in the morning. That's fine. But I don't want to come home. I mean, at this point, at, at my age now, I don't want to wake up in the morning and have people sprinkled on the living room floor. Not right now, but I think once we get back, once we get to 50, 55... When we at 50, 60. 55, I don't want nobody to sprinkle my living room floor. Why not? Do you really want to have... Okay. I mean, I don't want nobody to die down there. You know, I don't want nobody to die either. You got to start walking through, putting your fingers under people's noses. And making Maybe it'll get breathing. to a point where we have a big enough house where we have multiple bedrooms and people can go to yeah, sleep I think, in I think yeah, that's how shenanigans happen when you get to that age. Like, it's no more everybody sprinkled on your floor. Because you're older, you got more money, you got mm-hmm. a house, you got space. People can go, you to, know. To a spare bedroom. To a spare bedroom, so. Okay. You know, we was all sprinkled on the living room floor because yeah. Reg ain't had but one. He had one bedroom. He had a bedroom and a studio. Yeah. Where else was you going to go? Living room floor. Living room floor. You make it happen, Kyle. You, you might know. get an air mattress. Yeah. Maybe. 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 But no, I think, I, I, I think there's a... You know how it is. Like we we have older parents, and you see how like, it goes from your mom being your mom to your mom being like your contemporary to you being the mom. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, and so that's what I think is gonna happen for us. We you start out as a kid, you have your adult time, and then you get to be a, a like even bigger, older, richer kid kid again. And then Elisa will look at us like, what are you guys right. doing? And then Elisa had to come take care of us. I'm like, hey, hey, E, hey, E, I need you to bail me out, E. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're I not. To bail me we're out. not going to be getting arrested in our 50s. Oh, I don't know what happened. It's not going to happen. E. We're not doing that. We're not going to do that to our child and have her come bail us out of jail. Uh, why does she done flung poop in the damn. You got to pay her back for some of this that stuff. That don't mean she got to get... Yeah, yes, it does. Yeah, It absolutely... Because I ain't going to fling no poop. I just, I'm not a poop flinger. That's just not... <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do. So how am I going to pay her back for flinging poop if I can't fling poop? I got to come with something along them lines. I got to wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning until you bring your head down here and get me out of jail. It's not no, a good I, idea. I, I never want to be in jail again, so that's not... It'll be something. Pick me up from a bar or something or... A bar uh, or someplace. I don't know. Wherever I'm at, I need you to come get me. Mm-hmm. Cause bad things have happened. I don't want to hear nothing about no bars from you. I don't want to hear nothing about no bars. I got bars. I got bars. You gonna have? <laughs> you gonna want to have fun again at some point in your life? I have fun now. Yeah. Yeah, I have fun. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Stop telling me that I don't have fun. You know, I watch. I watch your life, and it kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, if it wasn't for me injecting some humor and some randomness mm-hmm. into what's going on, it would just your life would be baby Jim baby. Well, right now, my life is baby Jim baby because I have a, I have a goal in mind. When I have a goal, and I focus on that goal, and that means I'm not really doing anything else. That means I'm not going out, you know, drinking with my girlfriends because those are extra calories I could be saving right now because trying to lose some weight. Okay. 
So right now I have fun. I go to the gym with my girlfriends. And I we... got you. You got me. I ain't worried about no pounds. I, I just, am. I want my fun wife. We can, you know, that she's not so worried about everything and not so stressed out and obsessing over pounds and calories. Just give me six more months. All right, all right. I'm chilling. I've supported. I've supported you in everything that you wanted to do. I mean, is that not correct? Yes. Anything you 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 want to do in this realm, I'm completely behind you. I'm just saying you don't have to. You don't have to work that hard on my account. Just give me six more months to lose twenty eight more pounds. Whatever you want, sweetheart. Whatever you want. And then I get get back to being my fun self. I don't know that you will. I will. Get pies, and I will eat full boxes of Girl Scout cookies because I'm at the weight that I can be, you know. And then you, you know, you get to a point where you're just maintaining the weight. Want to know how I know your life sucks? What? <laughs> oh my goodness! Because you fall asleep watching This Is Us, and that's like the most depressing damn show. And I can't imagine falling asleep with that like on my brain, in my soul, like. An old man with lung cancer. What kind of brain cancer? Colon I think, cancer. I forgot what colon kind of colon cancer. I don't remember what kind of cancer he I had. It was colon cancer. Uh, that's the grossest cancer of all. That just shows how tired I am. You're watching This Is Us. See, the old Tammy fell asleep watching uh, Monk. It was funny. As you know, it was a mystery. It was something to solve. This Is Us this is, is an us. amazing show. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, you guys, tune in. If you care about your mental well-being and you don't just want to have all the emotions sucked out of your body every afternoon, don't turn on that thing. This show. Is Us is a very heartwarming show. It is not just about trying to make you cry. It is about just the the dynamic of a family. Everybody has something they can relate to. Really? In that. If you want to see the dynamic of a family, just look around. Here we are. Right here. It's entertainment. It's on TV. It's not entertainment. I can't wait till you fall asleep every night so I can put Family Guy on. I'll be waiting. As soon as I hear that snoring, yep. We hit the remote. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Everybody can't know you snore? I don't snore. She. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't snore shit. very often. Whatever. I lay on my side. And I do not snore. Really? I snore when I was pregnant. And that's, that's, that's all behind you now. It's all behind me all now. Behind. Yeah. Okay, word. Maybe it must be the same person whispering into the Google Home <laughs> and that's making all that noise at night. Oh, that that's makes sense. That Maybe makes we do sense. have a ghost. You know what? I think that signals the end of this podcast. We out of here, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost in here. As always, uh, ttcharities.org. Are we done for real? Yes, we, we leaving. We've been we've been we've been talking for like fifty minutes. We gotta uh, we gotta wrap this up. Wrap it up. We are not leaving, are we? I need the Oscar music. We all leaving. Yeah, can you put some shoes on? Mm mm. I'm going to bed. Nah, we, 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 I ain't staying here with this snoring, whispering <laughs> ghost. Nah, buddy. But anyway, yeah, ttcharities.org. Uh, please check them out. Uh, go to the website, see what, you know, if you can help at all, donate time, money, clothes, books, uh, whatever it is they need at the moment. Um, we've been trying to, I've been trying to make sure we focus and don't forget about uh, Flint, Michigan. Uh, we're over three years uh, without clean water, which is just, which just doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, and, and we're supposed to be the greatest country in the world. Uh, there's no way we should have... Uh, that big a segment of our population publicly go without clean water for this long. We gotta, we gotta fix this. So I know, uh, no man Tavares, uh, has a, has projects or has ongoing projects going on, trying to, trying to help that situation at Flint. So please check out the website and see what you can do to help. Um, TWS multimedia. We got a lot of things, uh, that we're trying to do big things coming in the future. So I know I know you you hear that every episode, but it is definitely true. I I wake up every morning trying to think of you know what I could do to take this a step further. So you know just hang with us if you've been listening to us so far. Uh, thank you. You know continue to listen. <laughs> Excuse me. 
we had more exciting and uh, compelling content on the way. We had had the episode with all the shenanigans from Friday. I'm working to try to edit it into something that's coherent enough <laughs> to uh, to release. Good luck with that one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as always, uh, be the light and uh, peace. Peace.